Evening everyone, this is Shadi Abu Yusuf and we're still talking about classroom management. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about classroom shapes. So let's answer today's question. Do we need as teachers to think about our classroom shapes? And my answer would be, it is actually the first thing that the teacher needs to think about when you sit, when you set your foot in the classroom. The first thing you need to think about is your classroom shape. So if you think that your classroom shape is inappropriate, that's what you start with. You change it before you start doing anything. Right, so let's have a look at some famous classroom shapes and let's talk a bit about them. And the first one is this one. That's a very famous classroom shape. And I guess, you know, I mean, for me, um, most of my experience as a learner was in this classroom shape. Well, I don't like it so much. And the reason why I don't favor this classroom shape is because as you see, it's very difficult for the teacher to keep good eye contact with the students sitting in the back. And also it's not very good for students sitting in the back to keep good eye contact with the teacher. And the students sitting in the first okay, row, it's difficult for them to keep an eye contact with the students sitting behind them. So it's not comfortable for everyone. However, um, if you have large classes, you can't escape this classroom shape. So it is only efficient when you're teaching a big number of students. And this is actually the case here in Egypt in so many schools, and I know in so many other countries. We've got 50 students in one classroom, 60 students, sometimes 40. I mean, those large number of numbers of students, you know, you can't imagine these students sitting in a shape that is different from this one. Also think about university lectures where uh, you have 500 university students attending one lecture. How would they be seated? That would be the only option and the only solution. Right. Good. Now, another classroom shape. Oh, oh, yeah, that's a picture of the uh, uh, of uh, the previous classroom shape. And this is me in one of the conferences where a lot of teachers um, uh, attended, attended this workshop. And again, finally, I couldn't escape the previous uh, classroom shape. So they had to be seated this way. Right. Good. Now, another classroom shape would be this one. And that's my favorite. That's the U shape, the great U shape, uh, or sometimes we call it half circle. And we like it. I like it so much because the teacher can see everyone and everyone can see the teacher and the students can see also one another. So it's lovely. OK. Um, and again, um, it's, it's very comfortable for class for uh, language presentation. So, so if the teacher wants to clarify grammar, to clarify functional language, lexis, vocabulary on the board, it's very easy. Why? Because the students are looking at the teacher and the teacher is looking at them as well. And also, if the teacher wants to change uh, this classroom into pair work. So again, it's um, it's very easy as well. You will get every two students working together and it will be really handy. Nothing would be difficult here. So again, lovely uh, classroom shape. Right. And again, this is a picture of one of my classes where students are sitting also in a class uh, in a U shape like this. And once I want them to work together, I will get them to work with the partners. Right. And those are wonderful teachers in one uh, of our training programs. Uh, right. Um, another also picture here. And as you see, we've got a students sitting around a table. And again, um, whether I like this or not, I'd say I like this uh, classroom shape. It's really good. However, it is limited for some activities. So I'd say this is a good classroom shape if you have the course book right in front of you, students have the course books, and maybe they're answering a controlled practice or something. Or maybe you want them to work in pairs, that would be suitable and appropriate as well. However, this is not an appropriate classroom shape for language clarification. Why? It's because the teacher is sitting and you cannot clarify language while you're sitting because in this scenario it means that you'll be writing on a paper right in front of you 
And if you write on the paper right, right in front of you, it would be really difficult for the other students to see what you're writing. And the reason why it would be difficult for them because is because simply, how would they see what you're writing on a piece of paper? It would be very difficult for the six students to see what you're writing. So I would say that would be a good classroom shape. But if you're about to present grammar, vocabulary, any sort of language, you need to leave your chair, stand up, stand by the board, and start clarifying language for students. Um, and this is how it looks in real classes. So students are sitting around a table, but if you want to clarify language, please stand up, do it on the board. Right. Now, that's another classroom shape here, and it's really perfect for group work. You want your students to brainstorm ideas together, to help each other in activities, to have group conversations, wonderful shape. Uh, however, be careful. If you put students around tables like these working together, once you move to classroom presentation, like language presentation, you need to ask, to ask them to get back in a U shape so that everybody is looking at you. Because remember, you can't keep st uh, students sitting like this while cl clarifying language. It means that some students' backs will be facing you. Also, if you want to give feedback or instructions, you want to make sure that this has changed and these groups are turned into a U-shape where students are looking at you and you're looking at them, right? But you can't keep it this way. And I've seen those mistakes happening in so many teaching practices is because some teachers, when they're being observed, they feel a bit anxious. And when they put students in groups like these, they forget to change the classroom shape and they leave the students sitting as they are. And that's a big mistake because they wouldn't be able to um, uh, listen to your instructions carefully and they wouldn't be also able to look at the board while you're clarifying language. Right. And this is an example. It's a picture from one of my classes where some wonderful teachers um, on the training are actually exchanging ideas and talking together uh, in a group work. Uh, but of course, after they finish and it is time for feedback, I will get them to, to sit in a big U shape so that everybody can see uh, the teacher and the teacher can see everyone as well. Right. Now again, that's, that's a wonderful classroom shape and the reason why inc I included this, it's not because it is part of the classroom routine because this is a bit weird uh, as a classroom shape, but it was needed at that time for a game I was running. I was running in my class, and I wanted my students to be seated this way so that people sitting, okay, on the chairs, they don't see the papers that the other students standing are looking at. And again. Um, the idea behind this picture is that you need to understand that you can change the shape of your classroom according to the activities. And this is what is expected from you also in professional courses like CERTESOL and CELTA and TEFL. Um, and let's have a look at this criteria taken from the CELTA uh, syllabus handbook, and which is 5A. And it says, arranging the physical features of the classroom appropriately for teaching and learning, bearing in mind safety regulations of the institution. Arranging the physical features of the classroom appropriately for teaching and learning. So again, students need to have a conversation in pairs, they sit in pairs. They need to work in groups, they sit in circles. Um, you want to change them uh, to change the seating for a game, you change the seating for the game. You want to give them feedback, they sit in a U-shape um, the sort of uh, the shape where students are looking at you, looking at them. So again, classroom shapes need to keep changing all the time according to your activities in the classroom. Do not put your students in one shape and leave it from the very beginning till the very end. It's very boring and it's inappropriate. Thank you so much. And it was lovely uh, being you again. Uh, remember, you can always contact me uh, via www.chaddy.blog. Also, my email me at chaddy.blog. 
and if you like this video please don't forget to like subscribe leave a comment and activate notifications thank you so much it was great seeing you all bye bye for now